I'm Glauco Souza. I'm the director of business development innovation for Griner Bio One. Oh, we're exhibiting a, a, a range of products, but uh, one of our main focus is a magnetic 3D cell culture. 3D cell culture is a, is a tool that we developed for uh, doing culturing cells in 3D. Uh, what does that mean? Why 3D cell culture? Uh, so we know how to culture cells. We take cells, put it in a petri dish, and we've done that for uh, 100 years. And, uh, but we understand today that growing cells in a petri dish in 2D, uh, it doesn't represent how the body works. The body is, uh, is a 3D, it's 3D. Cells interact with each other, with cells of the other types in a 3D environment. And uh, so the ideal um, condition for us to, to do research, to test drugs, to grow cells is using human cells in a 3D environment. Because we also have animals that we tend to use to test drugs for medicine, and, but they're not humans. The biology is not there. The magnetic 3D cell culture is a, is a pretty cool technique. And um, as I said, we grow cells in 2D, put in a petri dish and they stick. I think most people know that. But what we have undervalued in, in, in biology or in, in our world of research is how valuable it is when cells attach to a surface regarding the workflow, what you do with the cells, the work you do. And, uh, and now that we're going 3D, we lose these this cells attaching to plastic, which is very important. And uh, so when you go to 3D, manipulating cells is not trivial anymore. You cannot use the same workflow as you do in 2D. Because cells are usually floating, you lose them. And, or they are on a gel, which is very hard to manipulate. Uh, or they, they grow on a, on a surface that is not flat. And when you go to image, the ideal environment is a flat surface, which is all the instruments are designed for a flat surface. So with using magnetic fields and, and um, magnetizing cells with the nano the nanoparticle we have, we can actually replace the cell attachment with the magnetic field to hold things down, to do things in 3D, but still maintaining a lot of the 2D workflow that makes it, uh, that we, we, we value so much in, uh, when doing 2D cell culture. So we really have a 3D and a 2D workflow where the magnetic field allows you to position the cells, hold the cells on a flat surface. And, uh, and actually there's another, a lot more applications that we're developing that are actually unique for 3D assays, which is uh, we're not retrofitting from 2D to 3D. The application that we're most advanced is cancer. And for example, we just finished uh, 150,000 compound screening with the Scripps Research Institute, where we compared 2D versus 3D uh, with pancreatic cancer cells, and they're clearly different, and, and there's a major improvement on uh, using 3D. Uh, another aspect would be uh, toxicology, because uh, we know animals don't show human physiology, and the 3D cell culture is bridging the gap between vitro and, um, and, and, and humans, and that's what we want. Uh, and also in regenerative, regenerative medicine, we need the tools to manipulate and uh, create the bottom-up applications to go from the in vitro to the, the human body. My vision for the field of 3D cell culture, what comes next, is going to be uh, personalized medicine. You know, when you can take a, 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 a piece of the tumor of the patient and you can break it in hundreds of pieces and you can test dozens or hundreds of drugs to see what is going to be the best outcome and which drug is least toxic. So I think, I believe that's what is to come.